What kind of moth will these caterpillars into? Well, that secret is going to be revealed in this episode. They are the caterpillars of a rarely studied tiger moth. So revealing their life cycle on YouTube will be a fun educational project that raises awareness for these animals. These are the caterpillars of Arctia martinhonei, also known as the hill tiger moth, which is a species of tiger moth from Pakistan. It is closely related to Arctia kaya, or the garden tiger moth. And you, my friends, will love seeing the moths. You're watching an episode of Moth Cycles, my web series in which we raise moths together and talk about them. So let's start the intro right now. Recently, a newly described species of tiger moth has caught my attention. And of course, I want to breed it in captivity. Let me show you what I have and what makes them special. Rare caterpillars from Pakistan. So this species was described in 2005. Is it that newly described? It's 70 years ago. Well, in my opinion, on a taxonomic timescale, it's within the boundaries of what I would call recently described. Although, of course, that's quite subjective. In fact, in the genus of Arctia, I'm not aware of any new species being described after 2005. So unless I am mistaken, that means that this is one of the most recently described ones. Which makes them interesting, because we've had less time to study them since they were described more recently compared to other species. Does that make sense? And study them? Oh yes, we will. On my channel, I want to distribute free information about insects, including their early life stages. This helps people learn about them visually and helps understand their life history in a way that no books or illustrations ever could. These are living, breathing animals in a way you could never see them in a book. Can you see the value in a channel like this? I certainly can. Most Arctia species feed on a wide variety of herbs and these are no exceptions. The best plants to feed them are stinging nettle or urtica, dandelion or taraxacum, sorrel or rumex, bramble or rubus, and quite a few more. Let's check back a few days later. Breeding a newly described Arctia species? Only on the YouTube channel of Bart Goppens. This is spectacular. Let's have a look and see how they have been developing. Ooh, some very curious results I see. Very curious. Let's have a closer look. 
First of all, some of their food has dried out, but not all of it, as you can see here, some fresh stinging nettle. Stinging nettle is one of their favorite foods, together with basil and dandelion leaves. So let me dig my fingers in here, just to find a few caterpillars of the rare and exclusive Arctia Martin Honei. Wow, there we go. So, here's something interesting, but I noticed the caterpillars are slightly different from Arctia Kaya. So their orange hairs are a little bit more creamy brown in this species compared to Arctia Kaya. Now the difference is very subtle, but there is a color difference. To me, this is an interesting thing to conclude because this is a newly described species that was previously assumed to be Arctia Kaya. So for a long time this species was known as Arctia Kaya, the garden tiger moth, but turns out there were enough changes to justify describing it as another new species. So the different color in the hairs of the caterpillars makes sense, but it's also an interesting find. Based on that you can say, well, maybe that's a little bit more evidence of the fact they are really different. Thankfully, these seem to be growing very fast. You can easily raise them in plastic containers. I do like to give them a little bit of ventilation by like removing the lid and replacing it with netting, for example. Really wonderful and hairy caterpillars, as you can see. Pretty cool, huh? They are not fully grown yet, but I expect they will be soon. Let's put you guys back to eat. caterpillars have grown bigger. So far they weren't really difficult to raise. I used a well ventilated container that had a layer of paper towels and the lid was replaced with netting. On a diet of brambles, stinging nettles and basil their growth was quite quick and steady. Interestingly I find breeding moths from the genus Arctia both easy and difficult at the same time. It mainly depends on if the caterpillars want to hibernate or not. The hibernation can be tricky in some cases. In fact, I find hibernating the caterpillars extremely difficult most of the time, and that is when I tend to lose them in captivity. But if they don't hibernate, raising them from eggs to pupa becomes easy. Stranger, if you have any tips for hibernating Artia caterpillars, please write them in the comments. Personally, I think these caterpillars look different from Arctia. Kaya, the garden tiger. They are much less orange and instead have brown tufts instead where Kaya is more brighter rusty orange. So here have a close up. Who knows, it may even be of scientific value to people watching this to see these larvae in high definition on YouTube. Anyway, let's put them back soon and check back on them later. 13 days later, which is almost two weeks, which is actually somewhat of a long time skip. Let's see how they are doing. 
Arctia Martin Honei research vlog, another entry. Let's see how they are doing. The genus Arctia is one of my favorite um, genera of tiger moths, to be honest. I think they are some of the most fascinating of all. Some of them are incredibly easy to raise and some of them are incredibly difficult. So, um, let's see how they are doing. First of all, I can see that they've eaten all their food, like literally all of it, so I'll have to replace that soon. Oh dear. Oh, that's a very really good size. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna show you guys in a few minutes, okay? First, let me remove a small amount of larva, just for inspection. Just to see their health and size and measure them. Now, I said this before, but this species is very, very, very rarely studied in captivity. And if I succeed in raising these caterpillars, well, I am probably one of the less than a dozen people worldwide who have raised this particular species of Arctia. Since they come from the Himalayas, it is not easy to get material to study of these. I mean, the amount of people worldwide that are willing to traverse the globe just to get some samples of eggs or caterpillars of a pretty random species of moth from the Himalayas is pretty limited. So, in fact, I think that this may be my only chance ever of rearing this one. So I think this is enough caterpillars to make our uh, our close-up. Let's see. So yes, as I have noted before, the larvae really and truly do remind me of the Arctia kaya, the garden tiger moth, which is a moth species that's pretty common all over Europe and North America and even parts of Asia but there's just something different about them in my opinion um, for me the, the biggest difference between Arctia Kaya and Arctia Martin Honei to me is the orange hairs Arctia Kaya also have a similar color but in Arctia Kaya the hairs here on their body are brighter orange and here they seem to be a little bit more well it's almost more brown brown orange I guess uh, their size is pretty healthy I think it's my first time raising this species so it's always a challenge to raise wild uh, caterpillar caterpillars to their wild size I don't know how big this species in particular is supposed to be when fully grown, but for an Arctia species I think this is a respectable size. Look at that, Arctia Martin Honei. Whoop! Yeah, so when the caterpillars feel stressed they cur curl up into a ball. It's, uh, it's kind of cute. See they're just these fuzz balls. Just look at that. Well, they, they drop themselves it seems. I'm not sure why that keeps happening. It almost feels like they do that themselves. It's pre they're pl pretty slippery. Look at that. It's a very nice caterpillar, isn't it? Wow. Don't launch yourself into space this time, please. What a beauty. And look at these incredible tufts. Wow, now one of them is starting to wander, as you can see, healthy activity level here. Probably gonna get some new food for them soon. Oh, that's great. This is, this is excellent, really. My beautiful little fuzzballs. Look at you guys go. So 
So guys, I did just actually notice something interesting on the cover that I used for their container. It appears to be silk. And I think that this is our first cocoon and I'm not sure if I should open it yet. Because in here there is a pre-pupil caterpillar. And I'm opening it a little bit to inspect the health of the animal. Oh, that is interesting. But I also don't want to disturb its pupation. But it looks like we have our first potential cocoon and pupa. I just managed to make a cocoon in a really awkward spot, however. So I don't know what to do. Just want to see if it's pupated already and if it's not. Maybe I will leave it alone. Ah, oh, it's still a pre-pupa. Now I think I will take it out. I will place it in a special container where it can pupate, because it's not a good idea if it pupates on the lid. I'm sorry, buddy. I will place you in a special container for a pupa. Guys, I don't like to disturb a caterpillar that's cocooning, but I really don't like how it made a cocoon on the net cover that I used to cover the container, that's really inconvenient. If I have to remove it, I could damage it, especially if it's pupating. So this is a box with fresh paper towel. I will place in here the caterpillar that wants to cocoon. He will probably have to make a new cocoon for a bit. But that's not a big issue, because this species uses very little silk. So it, it can spin a new one in a few hours. It will not exhaust the animal too much. <clears throat> I hope to not disturb the other cocoons unless they also spin on the lid, which is bad. Alrighty, let's put this on. Alright, that's it. Let's see how that how this is going. <clears throat> Just gave them some new food. They seem to really like stinging nettle. And it's working, so I'm going to continue to feed that. I put, put in these toilet rolls because I'm hoping they will make cocoons in here. That would be convenient instead of like on the cover that I'm using. So this is kind of like the lid of the container. They like to hang out in there probably because it's dark and they can hide in it really well. But uh, look, if I'm putting it over the container like this and there's a pupa in it, I can crush it or hurt it. So it's in the caterpillar's best interest to not make it pupate there. So the study on this species seems to be going really well. And let's skip time, skip, skip time once again to see how they are doing five days later. Alright people, uh, today is time to check up on our rare Arctia. I think it's one of the last times that I will ever have to do it. Because as you can see, lots of them are making cocoons. And in fact, the first thing I see right here is already one new cocoon that has formed. So let me carefully try to take this cocoon out without damaging it. There you go. Perfect. Going to place this somewhere else. Great. Yep, next some fresh paper towels. Take caterpillars, put them back. Let's see, there's plenty of caterpillars. Now what's interesting is some of the caterpillars uh, are a lot smaller than the other ones. Can you see that? This is very typical for the genus Arctia. Um, it has to do with I guess their metabolism. Sometimes caterpillars suppress their metabolism for various reasons. They also just have a very variable individual growth speed. But the species is also capable of hibernating. And I'm guessing that the caterpillars who grow slowly at some point want to hibernate, so I will do that. While the ones that do not want to diapause are focused on basically growing as fast as they can. See? Some nice caterpillars in there. Should give them some fresh food. Guys, I love my job. Ah, I love studying moths. It's the best job in the world. And it's thanks to you guys that I can do this.
So let's just take some fresh stinging nettle. These guys love stinging nettle. To be honest, stinging nettle is one of the best plants you can give to tiger moths in general. So let's see what else we have. I found two more pupating caterpillars who made a cocoon, so that's plus two cocoons here. Wow, amazing. By the way, guys, let me give you one flashback. Do you remember the one caterpillar that I put in another plastic container because he was about to pupate? That one? Guess what? He is in here, he managed to form a new cocoon and he has even pupated. Can you see that? This is our first pupa of the rare Arctia species. So, but as you can see, its pupa is very fresh. I am not going to touch it or disturb it in any way. Instead, what I want to do is I want to take the other caterpillars who have cocooned, place them in here until they've pupated. After that, I can potentially remove them from their old cocoons. There you go, this caterpillar kind of fell out of its cocoon. I hope it can form a new one or otherwise just pupate in here. So potentially we're going to have already four pupa soon. Great news! I don't think I will ever be able to breed this species again. It's, it's really rare. I've been in the hobby for like 10 years. It's the first time I've ever seen them offered. So I jumped on the opportunity to study a rare Arctia species, more or less. And I think that's it. I think we can put the lid on and check back later. If this video seems a little bit chaotic and struggles with pacing, it's because I was stressed while making it. You see, I was nervous for their survival because this species is rare. And I had no clue what I was doing. Because not many people have raised this species before, there are no guides or care sheets to help me and to tell me how to raise them. So I was just making an educated guess. And educated guesses don't always have a happy ending. But the good news is that maybe this educated guess does have a happy ending, and since they were cocooning and pupating, I was afraid of losing them due to a mistake. More cocoons are forming up. I am excited. Alright people, it is time to prepare the container in which I'm going to hatch the pupa. Now I'm going to be hatching them in a nearly identical container. But not the same one as the one that I let them pupate in. So here, let's take a tear careful look at our treasures of the earth. I'm so excited. So here we see a cocoon. Let's gently open it up. Ah yes, and the inside reveals a beautiful and a perfect pupa. Soon we will take a look at it. Do not worry. And pupa number two is here. Let's take that one out. Okay, just carefully taking them out. Now in total there should be four of them. Here we see one of the caterpillars who has also made a cocoon. Maybe it's possible to keep this one without breaking open the cocoon. Oh, never mind. These, this species really doesn't need their cocoon in order to emerge successfully. Now I'm pretty sure I put four caterpillars in here so we must be careful. Could be a fourth pupa here, unless I am mistaken and forgetful. So, let's see. There you are. Ah, oh, this one has formed a cocoon here in the paper. And just by breaking it up. Oh, we have to be careful. This seems to be a very fresh pupa. I think this is too fresh to disturb right now. I will wait until the shell hardens, check back a few days later, that's no problem, it's too fresh. 
I don't want to hurt it. This is a very rare species, so we must be careful for every individual. Alright, let's have a first look at the pupa. Now, I'm not a taxonomist, but I don't see any significant differences between any other Arctia species I raised before in captivity. If you are one of the people watching this now right now, I also have something to say for you. Thank you so much for watching my channel, it means the world to me. This YouTube channel has changed my life. Um, Soon this channel will be able to contribute to the conservation of butterflies and moths in the rainforest. A noble pursuit. If you don't believe me, check out the videos that are going to be uploaded next year about this subject. I will be literally going to the rainforest in South America to study and conserve butterflies and moths. I'm doing all of this to protect and help these animals. This channel works together with real research institutions, breeding facilities, entomologists and more. Okay, this seems like random self-promotion because that's exactly what it is. But I have to do it once in a while. Did you know I crowdfunded reforestation in the Brazilian Atlantic rainforest and will study butterflies and moths uh, in this location in ways that will help their conservation? Did you know me and my channel do expeditions once in a while to document rare and threatened species? If you didn't know, then now you will be made aware. Join the Bart Coppens gang today to prove everybody can make a difference and help educate others about insects. This channel helps promote the conservation of insects and if you're interested in helping me, I will tell you all about that later. My strategy for hatching moths that are small with a short-lived pupal stage is a quite easy and simple strategy. It is very important that the moths are able to climb up when they emerge. So there has to be something coating the walls of their containers that they can climb up to. Sorry, I had the hiccups for a moment. I should stop drinking soda before I film. And I keep it like this. Very easy solution. Uh, the, the pupa of Arctia species generally lasts for about three weeks. That's not very long. So about three, maybe three, four weeks, we're going to see our babies, I'm pretty sure. All right, people, let's have another look. Yeah, let's see if there's any more cocoons in here. Ah, oh, yes, there are. Looks like one caterpillar made a cocoon inside this Cardboard roll, but it hasn't pupated there yet, so we're gonna leave it alone for the most part. The rule is don't disturb them until they pupate it. Aha! Look at that. Found a fresh new pupa here in the vegetation. Let's include it in the pupal box. There you go. Great. That's great. <laughs> See what else is there, huh? Let's check back a few days later. Another day, another dollar. Let's see what there is. Da, 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 da. Not going to make this very long. Essentially, I am here to clean the container and to look for some pupated larva. Let's see the cocoon in here. Has it pupated yet? Not yet, so we're going to leave this one inside. I do see signs of pupation. Whoop! Whoa! That was a good save. That's a good reflex, huh? Oh, look! Look what I found! A new pupa! That's right! If you guys are still watching this right now, then you are a true fan, by the way. There you go. 
So I'm about to change their container into a new one. Let's add some fresh paper towel. Let's take some of the old caterpillars that are still alive and add them here in their clean container. If you're still watching this, by the way, I have something to share with you. Personally, I am amazed that I can make videos about moths that are in some occasions hours long. And I'm not kidding when I say hours long and sometimes. Like there's two to three hour videos on my channel about like one certain moth species like this one. Look, here's another fully grown caterpillar. It hasn't uh, spun a cocoon yet. We also have a bunch of really small ones that are not really growing. So I think I will hibernate those soon after the big ones have pupated. So let me have a look. Aha! Also found another pupa. So let me put that one away. I do think it's fascinating that there are so many people watching my channel, like hour long videos about moths. And that it still gets attention, you know? You need a long time span and a lot of interest to watch a guy like me make hour long videos about obscure subjects like these. And let me ask you a question, how many people are there on the internet that are raising a voice for the conservation and research and just education on animals like these? Let me ask, answer that question for you, almost nobody. I am one of the only people on the internet doing this, on this skill and this level. I am one of the only ones. And this is why I really like YouTube. YouTube is a website that allows everybody to have a voice. Unlike old media, in which you need to be really lucky to have some exposure on there, social media gives everybody exposure as long as you're entertaining and have something to say. And I am really lucky and grateful to be one of the only people on the internet who has a lot of exposure with moths. I know there's a lot of entomologists that would love to be in my position, to have a huge platform like me, but it's really difficult to make entomology so entertaining, it appeals to young people. And that's what I have achieved. And I know this sounds like me tooting my own horn, giving myself a pat on the back, but you know what? Once in a while I'm allowed to do that. I'm also very grateful for everybody who supports me, who, uh, all of you who understand how important it is, how important it is to speak out for the environment, to, to speak out for animals like this who are not charismatic, like panda bears, and don't receive much attention from people at all, but they are just as important for our planet and for our ecosystems. And I'm really happy if this channel can grow bigger. I would benefit from it myself, but I think these insects would benefit from it too, you know? To have somebody who gives exposure to them. Somebody who cares and shows the world new species, rare species, endangered species the way I do. Almost doesn't exist. Thank you for watching. I'm very grateful to have all of you as my viewers. Alright, so let's add some stinging nettle in there. And I think we're good. Most of them have uh, pupated by now, not all of them. Some of them are still very small, like this one. But for the genus Arctia, in captivity is normal for a small percentage of them to grow very um, slowly. This is because they, some of them, well, their metabolic uh, growth rate is pretty variable in some instances. But some of them also want to hibernate as larvae. Other individuals do not. And the, this variation between the attitudes of the larvae does help them survive in the wild. Because they have uh, like different survival strategies. In captivity, some larvae will want to hibernate and or grow slowly and others want to grow fast and pupate. It's very hard to synchronize the uh, caterpillars of Arctia species generally in my opinion. Although if anyone is watching this who is an expert then please give me tips. As we can see we are not doing badly but I like to hear the experiences of other breeders who are into the genus Arctia. 
how do you synchronize the caterpillars? So here we have some of the pupa. And these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's uh, seven pupa so far. And I see three big ones, three normal ones, and one really kind of small one. So I will be wondering what the moths look like. We are getting really close to seeing the awesome moths. Just a little bit more patience. Let's check back a few days later. Yep, that's it for now. Let's check back again in like five, six days. And about the monologue I just gave about me doing stuff, raising awareness for insects. That's not just to toot my own horn, but it's also to convince you guys, okay? I'm not trying to convince myself, but I am trying to tell you guys that there is also an ideology behind this channel, a greater picture, a bigger picture, except for me just, you know, wanting online fame, wanting online attention. I actually want to bring attention to these animals. I care deeply about them and their existence and the current state of our environment. So, you know, I just hope you guys recognize this fact. Okay, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a little bit of an exciting moment. I was just checking my pupa and I saw something move and the moth is coming out. And to me, that's really great news. This is a rare species of tiger moth. I don't think there's many other people who will ever get the opportunity to raise this one. And if you are interested in tiger moths, both superficially and academically, this will be a special video because you're not going to see stuff like this anywhere else really on YouTube. So let's uh, have a small close up here. All right, folks, here it is. Our first Arctia Martin Honey. Now the underside of the wing here is very important to look at, especially this, this spot here. So I think I said it before in this video, but I will just repeat myself. I know I, re I repeat myself a lot on YouTube, but you'll just have to bear with me. So for a long time, it was presumed that um, the population of these insects was included under another uh, subspecies of the garden tiger moth. The scientific name of the garden tiger moth is Arctia kaya, and it was thought that um, these Himalayan Arctia kaya were under the subspecies Arctia kaya, I think it is orientalis. Now, as far as I know, the um, subspecies of the garden tiger moth from the northwestern Himalayas, Arctiacaia orientalis, is still a valid subspecies. But people notice that in Pakistan, and correct me if I'm wrong, but some populations of what was presumed to be the Arctiacaia orientalis populations in Pakistan had some noticeable difference. In particular, the moths that were found in some of the highlands. And the biggest difference was actually on the underside of the wings, which is why I'm happy that when these moths come out and they inflate their wings, that their, the underside of their wings is really nicely exposed. So right now we can look at the detail here. And then we can see that the markings are different. The underside of the wings of the garden tiger moth in comparison is quite different. So in particular it is this, well it's almost like a stripe like spot that runs over the entire section of the wing here. That is one of the major difference but also the coloration we can see a part of it is white. We see accents of yellow and red. There you go. And 
Having raced the Garden Tiger Moth Arctiakaya myself many times, to me the obvious, the difference is very obvious. Um, to people who are not familiar with Arctia species, it may be less obvious, but when I look at a moth like this, I do get the idea of like, wow, this is something new. This is not something I raced before. So, um, I believe the species was described in 2005. I'm doing this from the top of my head. So it could be wrong, but yeah, I believe it was 2005. Now that is a little bit recent. It's not super recent, but I would say it is somewhat recently described new species. Certainly not many people raised it. I noticed in the original paper there are pictures of the caterpillars, so scientists who described this Martin Honey for sure raised it in captivity just like I'm doing right now. But still, I bet there's only a handful of people who have done this. And I am just happy to be among them. For me, rearing them was very easy. There were very little challenges along the way. It seemed just as easy as the garden tiger moth. Similar conditions, similar food. So, yeah. And I don't know if there's many people watching this with an academic interest in tiger moths. If you're watching this and you study these on a scientific level, then write a comment below. Because I would love to hear from uh, the opinions of some of the people who are deeper into this genus of insects. But I'm pretty sure that some of them would be impressed by seeing this on YouTube. There you go. It's a lovely insect. Have to be careful, it's not finished inflating its wings yet. Its body is a red orange color. Oh, we disturb it a little. Let's not disturb it too much before its wings are finally completely dried out. But yeah, this is looking good. This is uh, very cool. Wow, what a beautiful creature. I love moths in the genus Arctia. If anyone has suggestions of what species to breed next, I'm all ears. They can be hard to raise sometimes, especially if the larva have to hibernate. Thankfully this time my larva did not hibernate, so it was a very straightforward rearing. No shenanigans with overwintering, thankfully. That's always nice. If anybody has eggs of species like Arctia vilica, hit me up. I'm totally up for the challenge. But then an accident happened. While I was gone, the moth started flying around and it got itself stuck under a pillow. And it rubbed itself some scales. <sighs> Guys, something stupid just happened and we had an incident. I was gone for a few minutes while I let the new moth species dry her wings and she managed to walk around and got herself stuck between the couch somehow. I don't know how they managed to do it, but now her wings are a little bit damaged. The good news is that this will not impact her ability to pair with a male and we can still make babies. But it is annoying to see that she now has an imperfection in her forewing and a lot of the skills are rubbed off. This is really, really, really annoying. Here's some of the damage, can you see it? On the forewing some skills have been rubbed off. The good news is this will not impact her ability to mate. And if we get a male, she can still mate and lay eggs. But it just it's just annoying because you do a lot of work to raise a rare species. And the first specimen... Well, due to bad luck, and perhaps the fact I should have been supervising the insect, an incident happens which causes damage to its wings. That's just really annoying. So now I don't have an opportunity to film the insect in a perfectly good condition yet. And annoyingly, we will have to wait until more moths come out of their pupa. This one has an imperfection now. It's really annoying. 
I wanted to film this insect in a perfect condition in high definition with good lighting. But this just doesn't look great anymore. The good news is we have a lot more pupa behind the scenes that we raised. And I suppose that with some luck from those pupa we will have many more males and females. I'll keep this specimen behind the scenes and wait until there is a partner for her. And then we can still start the second generation I suppose, that's a good thing. But man it's so annoying. A fresh new perfect looking moth already damaged itself and it's just kind of ugly now. Dang. Yesterday we had some good news and bad news. The good news is we had a female out. The bad news is she immediately managed to damage herself. Oops. It was kind of annoying. But again, today we have good news. I was just checking the container and I saw that we have a new moth. This time it's a male. So now we have a male and a female out. Uh, so... The good news is the mail is in perfect condition and right now we have daylight. That's uh, double good because now I can show the true colors in daylight. Filming indoors it always distorts the color. Wow! I'm a highly sensitive artist and I can hear high pitched noises. This may sound a little bit crazy but when I touch this moth I can hear it make audible squeak squeaking sounds. I know some tiger moths do this. It is known as um, audible aposematism. Um, some moths actually in response to bats for example can emit high-pitched uh, clicking noises which can um, interfere with their echolocation but it can also serve as a warning just like their warning coloration. It's like the red colors that they have, these bright colors. And I can clearly hear that this species emits a lot of sound, more than Arctiacaia. And the people watching this right now probably think that I'm crazy. But it's true, I can hear very high pitched noises. Sometimes I can even hear bats. Maybe it has to do with the fact that I have autism. I hear that people with autism can hear high frequencies sometimes. I swear I could hear it. Now it's stopped. Maybe there's a way I can film it later or record it with an audio recorder to prove that I'm not crazy. That's funny because that's a difference I noticed between this species and Arctiacaia. I don't know if people have ever looked into this genus and the difference between the acoustic aposematism per species in the genus, but I noticed in this species it's very strong. Anyway, let me show you a better close-up. So I think that nearly all of us can agree upon the fact that this species is incredibly beautiful. What's really cool about the moths in the genus Arctia is that their spots uh, show extreme random variation. 
as in almost in every individual that you will raise in captivity will have differently colored spots it's almost like a cow so each moth truly is visibly very unique can you guys hear the sound can you hear it i can hear it very strongly it's like stridulating wow i think we can all agree upon the fact that this moth is very beautiful and has very pleasant colors Although it's a bit difficult to bring out its red hind wings because it only likes to show them as a warning. It kind of tries to conceal its true color, so to say. Wow. One, th One thing that's really cool about moths in the genus Arctia is that the spots in all of them are random. So if you breed many of them, each moth has a unique color pattern. Kind of like the spots in a cow, where every cow has a visibly distinct pattern of spots. The same happens with moths in the genus Arctia most of the time. So and I like that a lot. So when you end up rearing a lot of moths, you can identify each of them by their patterns. And you can re you can it results in really cool variations once in a while in captivity. Wow, it really is a very magnificent species. I mean, let's manipulate it carefully to show some more of that beautiful colors. This species really reminds me of a ladybug for some reason. I can smell the bitter chemicals. They have some noxious bitter chemicals that make them distasteful. It kind of smells like a ladybug. And I know ladybugs have chemicals called pyrazines. I don't know if tiger moths have pyrazines. I know that they can sequester alkaloids, but are pyrazines alkaloids? I don't even know. My chemistry is not that great. Oh, it's a very active little fella. And I'm really proud of raising them. Now, moths in the, in the genus Arctia do not feed. They, these do not have a functional mouth. Oh, nice shot of the underside right here. They do not have a functional mouth and therefore only live for about a week, unfortunately. Uh, this is not true of all tiger moths. There's a lot of tiger moths that can feed. You'll see some of them on my channel that do drink flower nectar. But it depends on what subfamily, what group that they are from. Uh, moths from the genus Arctia are non-feeding. so. But a week is enough for them to mate. Lay eggs and die. That's what they do in this short amount of time. It's a real beauty. And it's not very interested in sitting still. Ah, now I managed to get a better shot of it. Can you see it? It's sitting here on this branch. In this moment, I managed to get a good shot of it. It's feeling a little bit threatened by my hands, but the temperature outdoor is also quite cold. So it's just flexing in this position and it's okay with me holding its wings up a little. Just for the sake of education and entertainment. And we can see that this species really is gorgeous, can you see it? They're so bright and colorful. That's why we love moths in the genus Arctia. They are really spectacular moths. As you can see. What's funny is I read a study once about birds who prey on moths in the genus Arctia. Turns out that the moths are mildly toxic depending on their diet and that birds pretty much know about this toxicity and only eat a certain amount of moths per day. For example they'll eat two or three per day but not more because if they eat more they'll get sick. So it's interesting to know that the warning coloration doesn't always deter every predator, but that some predators um, have adapted to feeding on them in such a way that they know exactly how many they can eat before they get sick. I suppose that still means the aposematism is working if predators are still limiting their intake of them as a prey item. I just thought that was really funny. Oop. So beautiful. 
And this moth came all the way from Pakistan, which is where the eggs are sent from, by another scientist who collected them there. Super beautiful. I am in love with this one. Here's a shot of the underside of the wings of the male, which is very relevant. It's the underside of the wings that were also used in the original paper to describe them. So here you can have a close look. Sorry for holding it like this, it does not harm the moth as you can see. It's fine. Alright, so here we have the male and the female that unfortunately damaged herself like one hour after she closed. Yeah, it looks wonky, but let's get over it because we still have a great opportunity here to pair them. Now from my experience, pairing moths in the genus Arctia is rather simple. One just needs a net cage and to place them together on room temperature. I don't know what time of the day this species likes in order to mate, but from my experience they will mate at night for most species. So if I check back tonight there should be a decent chance that they are pairing. Alright ladies and gentlemen, this is Bart Coppens in the dark. Thankfully I have a night vision camera, let's put it on. Toot. I'm still in the middle of the darkness by the way. But maybe it's time to put on some lights. Let me find the light switch. Ooh. So I was noticing that our tiger moths are indeed pairing tonight people and I just briefly want to show you because I'm happy it's a rare species. Alright folks here it is. The male and the female of the rare Arctia martinhonei copulating, can you see it? So that means we're going to get a whole bunch of babies. And with that of course I am extremely pleased because it means we again we are successful with a yet another species. That is just great. I'll leave you guys up to making love. But wow. I am so happy. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So you guys may not be aware, but the moment I'm filming this, it's almost Christmas. And I was talking about the uh, rare Arctia species that I'm breeding until I noticed that I just got a Christmas card from a 12 year old viewer. 12 years old. And I thought the card was so endearing, I wanted to show you its contents on YouTube. Of course, I'm going to keep the identity of my 12 year old fan totally anonymous. I'm not going to reveal it on YouTube, but we can say na that his name is Paul. Let's show you what Paul sent us. Merry Christmas, Seton's greetings. Hello Bart. And Paul has included a very beautiful drawing of the Arctia martinhonei, the species we've been breeding in this video. Paul, if you are watching this, I love your card. I love your mail. It's very inspiring to see that young people are enjoying my channel. And it's probably the cutest thing I ever <laughs> in my whole YouTube career have received. Thank you, Paul. You are really talented. Just look at that beautiful drawing of a moth. It's accurate. Let me do you the honors of holding a real moth next to your beautiful drawing. Of course, I'm not going to let it sit on the drawing because the moths, they can make stains on it. They're dirty creatures, but... That's inspiring, huh? So accurate. Now the reason I make YouTube videos is because I want to inspire other people. I want to inspire other people to care about insects and show their beauty. But in moments like these, it is my viewers that inspire me. 
and makes me really happy to see that we have such young viewers. That being said, is this a family friendly channel? Oops, I do make inappropriate jokes sometimes. Then again, I'm very pleased to see that children from such a young age are watching my videos about insects. And let me tell you something that I always wanted to do. I always wanted to develop something like a children's book about insects, right? Because I get a lot of emails from moms and dads like, hey Bart, my son is 10 years old, my son is 12 years old, my son is 9 years old, and he's curious about insects. But we don't have many resources for children that, so that they can learn from, well, they can learn some entomology. And I can relate because I was always interested in butterflies and moths. And when I was nine years old and 10 years old, it was actually very hard to find information about them that's appropriate for my age. Of course, now I'm almost 30 years old, so that's not a problem anymore. But um, I don't know. I always wanted to like develop a children's book for insects. I think it would sell pretty well, considering I have a huge YouTube audience who are watching my videos. Anyway, developing such a thing would probably cost a lot of time and money, but maybe somebody is watching this who works at a book company or is, is talented with illustrations, and they should give me a phone call, really, so we can work something out, it would be cool. Any book publisher out there? No? Illustrators who want to collaborate? You know? It would probably make some profit if I market it, considering there's probably a lot of children watching my channel. And they would love to have an age-appropriate insect book that isn't belittling or childish, that actually has some high-level facts and information. Because I think children, they can learn a lot if you, if you treat them with respect and don't present the information in a simplistic and childish way, in a mature way, just maybe more in smaller chunks for children. Yeah, I think developing such a product for my channel would actually be successful, but I don't have the resources to do it myself. Hello there, any investors watching this? Either way, let's not uh, drift away from the subject too much. Paul, if you are watching this, I loved your card, it is wonderful. I hope that someday you are going to grow up to be a great entomologist. Let's proceed. Let's check back a few days later. All right, people, believe it or not, but today I checked the container and I found a new meal waiting for us. All right, wow. So this male, once again, he is very pretty. I see some yellow accents in here on the hind wings. See it? Little bit of yellow going on there. And I really love that the white frill that it has under its uh, hind wings. That's beautiful, it's gorgeous. Welcome to the world, new male of the Arctia Martin Honei. Our population looks like this right now, which dare I say is not bad. Two males, one female. Good, it would be nice to have another female. I haven't filmed a female yet that is in a good condition, because this female still has some damage on the wings. Just would like to have like a video of a female in a perfect condition. Otherwise, it's great, they already paired, so it would be cool if the male, the fresh male, the new one paired with the female too, just for some genetic diversity. Would be nice. Otherwise, I think we're doing pretty well, huh? The female already left us with some of her first eggs. Now, that's a really good sign. And here I found even more eggs on the cage walls. So that's going to be a lot of offspring from this particular female. So the eggs of this species are pretty much green-yellow in color. 
round, very pale. That's great. We're going to have babies. Yep, our newest male. It's really beautiful. Yep, our newest male is really pretty. Just as pretty as the last one. You gotta love them, don't you? Really pleasing colors. Wow. All right, let's put them in a cage and leave them alone. Have fun, guys. And oh, don't forget to lay more. There you go, close the cage. Sorry for that uh, shaky video. Had to zip uh, up the zipper. Great. Let's check back a few days later. Just checked the container and noticed a fourth moth coming out today. Yep. And, and it looks like we have yet another male. Hmm. Now the good news is this male is looking great. Very excellent condition. Looks like the breeding went well, the animals are healthy. But I would have preferred to have another female instead, because now we have three males and one female that already paired. Hmm. That's what you get with moths, it's never 50-50, it also depends a little bit on luck. Really nice wings and colors though. You have to love it. Still want to get a perfect shot of a female. One that's in good condition, that would be great as well. Either way, I shouldn't complain too much, it's looking pretty okay. The good news is there's a few more pupa left. One, two, three, four, five. So we can expect to have five more moths. I also have some caterpillars, ones that refuse to grow. Slow growing caterpillars, I suppose. Maybe they will hibernate. Things are really looking great, however. It has been a good rearing. Once again, a good result with the sexy moth king, Ward Coppens. All right, folks, it's an exciting moment. Our newest baby is ready, somewhat. He's sitting in a normal position. You have to be careful, his wings are probably still a little bit moist, not completely dried out, but yeah, look at that. Arctia species are really underrated animals. I love them personally. They are some of my favorite moths to breed. I will show you more species of them in the future if I can. See their bright colors and red hind wings signal to predators that they are mildly toxic and on top of that probably taste very bitter considering they contain toxic alkaloids. I love how their pattern of spots is completely variable, much like of those on a cow. Each moth is unique and has unique spots. Let's check back a few days later. And we are back on the Bart Coppens YouTube channel, the only YouTube channel that shows you all the magnificent treasures of nature. And we have another moth. And I am hoping that, yes, I think we have a female. Great. This female seems to have yet another imperfection. Her wings aren't really as straight as they're supposed to be. So it looks like I'm cursed to never have a picture of a perfect female of this species with the first one sort of ruining her own wings and this one 
not having perfectly straight wings. Oh, and she just tried to fly. But the good news is she can pair and she can continue the next generation of beautiful moths. So I am going to take her and place her in the cage together with the other males and I hope that the other males are still alive. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see what the status of the other moths is. <clears throat> so let's see how they are doing. Aha! So we have... It looks like the one male and one female have died. They are the first male and female. Rest in pieces. These moths do not live very long. However, our newest female and two males are still alive. And I'm confident that they have enough energy to pair. So that means there will be more babies. Oh, this is hard to control them. Let's put them in a cage. Well, let's hope that these will start making love then, huh? So we can start generation two. Maybe I should collect some of the eggs here that they left. It's tiger moth eggs, they tend to hatch in a short time. Maybe I should. All right, that's it. I'm going to leave them alone for tonight and put them in the dark. Hopefully tomorrow they will pair and make more babies for me. Let's check back a few days later. So. We know the drill by now, don't we? Ah, there it is. I knew I saw a moth coming out. Once again, we have a female, yay. This time in a little bit better condition. So now we have two females and two males and I really hope that they pair, yay. Great. Not going to bother filming her too much yet. She must be exhausted. Coming out of her pupa. Finally, we do have a female that's in a reasonably good condition. But she, she can't stop moving around. Are they going to mate? I'm not sure. Let's check back tomorrow. For opening the cage. And putting the female in here. And we will wait again. Let's check back a few days later. I was just looking at the container and look what we have here, ladies and gentlemen. Another new moth, and in this case, a female. Let's take her out. Come here. Oh, very pretty. A few days later, a few days later again we had new moths. I think you've seen quite enough, let's see if the eggs are hatching. Alright party people, please ignore the baby boomers using the leaf blowers. It's leaf blower time, it sucks. They make a lot of noise and they are a waste of gasoline. Anyway, look at these eggs, do you notice something weird about them? As you can see, some of the eggs are tur turning dark, almost black. See that? Now that means that they're about to hatch soon, so that's a warning sign that I should collect them before they hatch. To make it easier to find all the caterpillars. Now, I just use, use carefully my fingernail to scrape the eggs off. 
above a plastic container. If you're careful this is possible, the eggs are kind of strong. You can just carefully scrape them off. Just be gentle, okay? Don't crush them. There you go. One more moth uh, came out. Surprisingly, people. some of Probably the oldest moths are dead. Generation. Let's quickly show it. This female is still barely alive. But these three here. Game over. Yeah, Arctian moths, they do not live very long. You can enjoy them for maybe two weeks. That's it. Hey, looks like you're going to be a father soon. Because look at all the eggs that I collected. That, my friends, is a lot of eggs. Maybe I should let you out of there. Yes. Whoa. Come on, mate. The females of this species do lay a lot of eggs and here I collected some of the first eggs. It's quite a lot as you can see. Obviously I haven't counted them, it's too much for me to count. But you can see some of them are already darkening. It should not be very long before we have babies actually. Which is good, because that's what we want, right? The point is we want to complete a life cycle. So let's take our newest fresh female and put her in here. Yay! That's fantastic, people. We don't have that much pupa left. I think at this point we have one pupa left. Wow. Let's check back a few days later. Hey, all right, beautiful people. My spider sense is oh, tingling. I'm feeling all tingly, and when I say spider sense, I mean moth sense. See, I just had a look at my babies. Oh, I already spoiled it, I had babies. Ah, it was coming, we already collected the eggs. Let me show you. Hey, wow. Remember all the eggs you collected? Well, looks like babies are being born. Can you see them? really small, they're really hairy. Now here's a fun fact about the caterpillars of moths. Most species of them, when they are born, they will eat their old eggshell. So they're not really hungry right away. They're born with a full stomach. And here you can see that perhaps some of the caterpillars are trying to eat the shell of their eggs. So when they are born, they oops, immediately have lunch. It's fantastic. This is wonderful and it means we completed the life cycle of this rare insect. And for that I am really happy. I've been in the moth breeding hobby for over 10 years. And this is the first time I saw the Arctia Martin Honey in captivity. I don't think it's going to happen again in the future. Unless we are really lucky. Wow. And for that I'm really grateful to be part of this experience, you know. I'm one of the rare people who get to do the things that they like, like everybody else wants to. Anyway, uh, I think the caterpillars could use some food, but not too much, since the container is not completely ventilated. So let's give them one dandelion leaf. Okay, maybe two small dandelion leaves. Should be enough for them. After that, sorry for the light ring, filming this is really difficult. After that we should to put the lid back on. We can check back later. Great. Alright folks, the babies are being born, but meanwhile, one of the last moths, for now, has come out. And it's a wonderful female. Excellent.
Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, and that is pretty much the end of this breeding project. I would love to show you more, but there's a few problems. I don't know if you noticed, I hope you really enjoyed the show, I did my best to make this video entertaining, but the quality suffered in a few places for a few reasons. Reason number one, I am literally, when I'm filming this, I'm literally about to leave to the country of Brazil for two months um, and I'm going to research butterflies and moths there in the wild for two months. So I had to wrap this video up really quickly to get it out on the internet. I felt a lot of time pressure. Um, these videos are very long, take a lot of time to edit, to write a script. Um, I wanted to put this video out here before I travel to Brazil. So when I come back to the Netherlands, I don't have like unfinished videos on my computer. That's annoying because I want to straight go into the rainforest videos when I return to my country. Second of all, I was nervous. Um, this is the first time I raised this pieces. There's no guides on them and I was nervous because they are rare. I didn't want to lose them. Uh, breeding can be challenging sometimes if you raise something no one else ever raised before and there's no guides or people to help you. That's reason number two. So yeah, reason uh, number three is uh, I recently also had to do a trip to London, which was actually halfway through this video. So the, the pacing kind of suffered because of that, um, because the time pressure and uh, some of the video got interrupted halfway through. Uh, there's just a lot of stress behind the scenes right now. It's not my best work, but we still have the life cycle of a rare tiger moth. And I still wanted to get it out there. And normally I would continue the video and maybe show you how I raised the babies of generation two, but I can't. I'm leaving soon to another country. My parents will take care of the babies. Good news is uh, this channel will soon be contributing to rainforest conservation. It's absolutely true. Um, I've even brought a, some brand new cameras, which was a massive investment. Here's a Lumix camera, my uh, newest one. I should actually put a lens cap on it to prevent damage. Really expensive camera. Uh, it's also going to be a very expensive trip that I made, but um, it's partially crowdfunded from YouTube. It's uh, some of my fans who paid for it. And we will be helping um, raise awareness for the rainforest, uh, replanting trees, studying animals and rare insects there and raising awareness for them. Maybe do, do, doing a little bit of conservation and uh, my studies there will also help conservation. So that's fantastic. But let's go to the discussion part of this video, which we traditionally always have in moth cycles. I hope you enjoyed this kind of rushed video with odd pacing. Uh, I apologize. I hope it didn't uh, spoil the experience for you. I mean, they're still very nice animals and we still sell the whole life cycle, so why not? Let's go. discussion time. This is my web series called Moth Cycles and in Moth Cycles we always raise species of moths from tiny egg to uh, adults and hopefully we get pairings but not always. For Moth Cycles the life cycle doesn't have to be complete but I do want to produce some moths um, from eggs preferably and at least have all the life stages in my series Moth Cycles. That's kind of the point. Now usually in the discussion part we have a presentation, but today it's a little bit different. Because uh, this Arctia Martin Honey is a, well somewhat of a rare Arctid. You don't see this one in captivity. Even though visually it looks very similar to, to some more commonly available ones like Arctia Kaya. Um, it is a, a somewhat new species uh, described in 2005. And I thought it would be interesting if we discussed the paper in which it was discovered. And I would read it for you. It is titled A New Arctia Species from the Himalaya by Vladimir Dubatolov and Vladimir Ogurko. Um, well, especially the name Mr. Dubatolov. I see this name a lot in the publications of uh, 
of mods that I like. Mr. Uh, Dubartolov seems to publish uh, a lot. He seems to be a very prolific researcher, so uh, respect to you, Mr. Dubatalov, and also your colleague, of course. But uh, I'm familiar with your work. Now, I don't think, know if you're watching this, probably not. Uh, I don't think a lot of uh, entomologists, at least their taxonomists, are watching my channel. But um, either way, I'm impressed. And thank you for your science. So, um, it reads, a new species, Arctia martin Honei. Spec Novo is described from the Pakistan provinces Azad Jammu and Kashmir. Formerly it was confused, confused with Arctia Kaya orientalis, which is also a Himalayan subspecies, which was uh, described also from the northwestern Himalayas, and differs by the presence of a blackish transversal band. The absence of clear subbasal spots at the forewing underbase and uh, underside base and an oblique not nearly perpendicular costal subbasal spot on the forewing upper side. In the male genitalia, the new species is characterized by sharp paniculi apices. Those of Arctiacaia are rounded. So it turns out there are differences in their genitals, which is an important cornerstone in taxonomy, considering that moths with differently shaped genitals would not be able to procreate uh, that easy. And this would be uh, at least one of the species barriers that uh, would would lead to, to separate them in the wild instead of producing offspring. Uh, which is actually important when you describe new species. You want to know if they um, are able to form fertile offspring with uh, other populations. If so, then maybe you can deduce from that if they deserve to be their own species or not. During an expedition in 2003, Three by Gurko to the Pakistan Kashmir region, he collected several specimens of the genus Arctia that were determined to be Arctia Kaya orientalis, based on the description of the subspecies by Hamson. However, the later comparison of these specimens with the original description showed strong distinctions. Our specimens have strong um, blackish fascia at the forewing base on the underside, and Hamson, I guess that is the one who described as uh, orientalis subspecies, um, not correctly cited this character to be distinctive for the subspecies. Nevertheless, such a conspicuous character was not mentioned in the original description of Arctia Kaya orient or orientalis. We asked Dr. Martin Honey about the presence of the type specimen in the British Museum. He answered that there is a single such specimen um, color plate 16, figure 1 to 3, it references the, uh, the illustration, which was labeled as a type by Moore, but its geographical label uh, do not coincide with those in the original description, being Sonamur, Kashmir, which is, uh, I think, the location. The available specimen was collected in the Allahabad um, in northwest India by Hellard, so it does not belong uh, to the types. At the same time, the specimen from Moore's collection almost corresponds to the original description and might be considered as a specimen determined by the author. It has the forewing underside pattern uh, as in other Arctiacaia subspecies and completely lacks blackish fascia at its base. Moreover, Gurko obtained eggs from a female specimen and reared them to a series of specimens, all of which have the uh, darker blackish fascia at the furring on their side. Now remember when the first moths came out and uh, I, will, I stressed the presence of the black bands on the underside of the wings to you guys? Well, that's why I pointed it out and I wanted you guys to notice because that's one of the characters that were used to identify and determine that they were a new species. Such uh, consistency on the main character provides us with a basis to consider the two species from the Kaya group occur in the northwestern Himalayas, because following Hamson, all specimens with blackish fasciae at forewing underside were mistakenly considered as Arctia Kaya orientalis and are not yet described as a separate taxon. Here we describe the taxon as a new species. So it turns out in, in the Himalaya, the garden tiger moth, Arctia Kaya, which is a different species, has a special subspecies in the Himalayas and it's called Arctia Kaya orientalis. But among that subspecies, turns out there were also particular specimens that stood out as different. 
um, which are actually another uh, species, the uh, Martin Honei. And I guess that uh, the differences between Artiacaia orientalis, the Himalayan garden tiger moth, and Martin Honei, the uh, Pakistan tiger moth, were not noticed before. Which makes sense because there's not that many people l looking at uh, characters between subpopulations of moths in the Himalayas, but uh, I think that's interesting. Now here I have a whole uh, I have here a whole description with morphological traits, but I'm not going to read all of that because one, I don't want to plagiarize the whole paper on YouTube. Uh, second of all. It's uh, a lot of technical uh, descriptions that not most of my viewers will understand, such as, um, for example, the sub-basal bound brand is formed by two spots, fused or separated, costal one strongly oblique to costa and extending up to a fold between cubital and anal veins. And a lot of language like this. Wow, that's just fantastic. Somebody is playing loud music while I'm recording this. <sighs> Anyway, hope you guys aren't distracted. Uh, I am, I have terrible concentration, but let's proceed. So, um, I'm just going to summarize it, but there are um, differences in the genitals. So, uh, the sharpness of the pinniculi apices is uh, what they are described. There are differences in the, in the spots, which are consistent, despite the fact that Artia spots tend to be variable. Uh, there is a consistent difference between the Orientalis subspecies and um, this new Marti Martin Honei. Medial bands separate in cell and fuse behind cubital veins, forming a fused eye-shaped figure. So, all things considered, yes, they have different spots. They have different genitals and perhaps may also a slightly different habitat. The habitat is described as a mixed forest belt within subtropical foothills of the northwestern western Himalayas. And the larva is also shown on a color plate. Really interesting. Uh, I'm skipping some of it to uh, keep it a little bit more entertaining. But a comparison of the genitals uh, does provide more evidence. So what's the thing with moths and genitals? Well. One of the um, principles of biology of, uh, of, of species is that um, separate species are considered to be separate populations of an organism that are unable to create fertile offspring. And the principle behind moth genitals is always like a lock and key uh, mechanism. Um, moth uh, genitals are usually have very complex shapes and uh, kind of fit together like puzzle pieces. Now, if these pieces are formed differently, that by itself is evidence that um, they would not be able to interbreed if you take two moths and their genitals are shaped differently. Um, there can be a conclusion that uh, based on that alone, there is probably uh, genetic isolation or at least some form of a species barrier. It's hard to explain this, my native language is not English, but I hope you guys catch my drift here. So, yeah. And uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, this is uh, one of the more recently described Arctia species. I really love Arctia species, by the way, they're uh, amazing. And I was happy to be able to raise this one. So, uh, it's very unusual. They don't look that different from Arctia Kaya, but I did notice some of the differences myself. I saw the black bands myself when rearing them. Caterpillars also look different to me. Their color is just, you know, just that different. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy with this, and I, got, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, short life cycle. Really. Now, one thing that's really missing on my channel is the life cycle of Arctia kaya, because we we literally just in this video raised a a newly described species. Well, not that recently, but somewhat recently. Um, that was described from a uh, subspecies of Artiacaia. So to compare the differences, we should at least have the moth cycle episode of the garden tiger moth on my channel as well. I'm not sure when it's going to happen because these episodes, they take usually a, a lot of time to make and film and produce. But maybe next year 
or the year after that, oh, who knows, if I'm not too busy uh, filming too many videos at the same time. But the Garden Tiger is somewhere on my uh, high up on my to-do list for moth cycles. So yeah, let's skip to the final part of this video. I hope the music on the background doesn't distract all of us too much. Um, of course, I'm going to end the uh, Moth Cycles video now with the usual uh, message. And that's the fact my YouTube channel is demonetized. It's completely demonetized by YouTube. When I make a video, when I upload a video, I don't get uh, money from YouTube. See this kind of stuff, money? It sucks, but it's important. Um, because these videos take me so much time to uh, make. It interferes with my ability to work and make money. I have a lot of bills to pay in my life and uh, it's hard to make stuff like moth cycles, which is months of filming, a lot of editing, writing, and at the same time uh, have a channel that doesn't generate income. So if you like this show, consider donating, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon. You can donate via PayPal, via Ko-Fi. There's many ways you can donate to me and my show. In return, I will make uh, freely available videos that educate people on biodiversity and the life cycle of insects. This channel is even helping the rainforest now. We have a project in Brazil that is crowdfunded. We will do reforestation in Brazil and entomology and researching butterflies and moths. If you don't believe me, it's going to be on my channel. The videos of this are going to be up soon. So if you support me, you also indirectly help me support my work, which helps the environment and spread awareness for insects and makes educational uh, moth videos, which is pretty rare. As little as one dollar a month helps people. Sorry for begging on the internet. I don't like doing it. I hate doing it, in fact. But YouTube completely and utterly permanently demonetized me. They are not helping me. Uh, the only people who can help me are my viewers and my fans. So I'm really dependent on tips and donations to continue this channel. Otherwise, I cannot do the show. So just throwing that out there. Of course, it's a personal choice. I understand not everybody is willing or able to afford it. That's fine. Uh, it doesn't make you less of a viewer if you can't. But I'm saying for the people who are willing and able, if this kind of content is worth your money, if you're curious about insects, it's probably worth investing in. Because the more budget I have, the cooler things I can film as well. The better cameras I have, the better species. So um, some funding for this channel is very important. Thank you guys, hope to see you next time.